You should be able to check your work analytically. We're going to go ahead and go to our graphing calculator and check our solution using the intersection of graphs method. We've already placed the equations in our Y1 and Y2 menu. And we'll go ahead, we've also adjusted our window so that we'll be able to see our equation solution on our screen. We'll push graph. And we'll see that the two graphs intersect. That intersection point is a solution to our equation. We can find it by second calc 5 intersect. First curve is y1. Second curve is y2. We'll use our arrow keys to go over to a point near the intersection. Hit enter. And we have our confirmation that x is indeed 75. Now we're going to uh, use our graphing calculator in a little different way to solve this more complicated equation. We have the equation 2 pi x plus the cube root of 4 equals 0.5 pi x minus the square root of 28. We'll solve this problem using the equation solver in your graphing calculator. We go back to the graphing calculator to y1, clear out what we had there before, and then we'll go ahead and enter those equations in the graphing calculator. 2 pi x plus the cube root. We'll go to math function for that. 4 cube root of 4 and parentheses. And that will be our equation 1. Our equation 2 is 0.5 pi x minus the square root of 28. And what we're interested in now is y1 minus y2. That would be equal to 0. Our equation solver is in the math menu. It's all the way down at the bottom. It's choice 0 where it says solver. We push enter there. And it says equation 0 equals. Remember, we set up our y equals menu so that y1 minus y2, which is what we want to have solved, is in the y3 menu. So we'll go back to our calculator and we'll push vars, y vars, function, and then we'll push 3 for y3. We'll now push enter. Although 2 is not our answer, it's sort of our guess, uh, we can now have the calculator solve the problem by pushing alpha, enter. You see it says solve there. And it comes up with a solution to the problem. Negative 1.46 rounded to the nearest hundredth. In all the examples we've done so far, there has been just one answer. These are called conditional equations. There are two other types of equations we need to consider. One has no solution at all and is called a contradiction. The other has an infinite solution and are, they are called identities. A contradiction occurs when in solving an equation, you get an obviously false statement, something like 1 equals 0. Graphically, that makes the two functions parallel. There is no solution because there's no intersection point. An identity occurs when, in solving the equation, an obviously true statement occurs, such as 6 equals 6. Graphically, the two graphs coincide, so the solution is an infinite set. Let's take a look at an equation that is an example of one of these two. If 6 times 2x plus 1 equals 4x plus 8 times the quantity x plus 3 fourths, the first thing we would do to solve this equation is remove the parentheses. 
12x plus 6 equals 4x plus 8x, and 3 fourths times 8 is 6. Then we'll combine some like terms. 12x plus 6 equals 12x plus 6. You may see, even at this point, that this is going to be a true statement. We'll subtract 12x from both sides to try to get the x's on the same side, and we'll wind up with 6 equals 6. Well, this obviously true statement would lead us to believe that this is, in fact, an identity, and its solution set is infinite. Now let's consider another equation. 7 times the quantity 2 minus the quantity 3 plus 4x minus 2x equals 9 plus 2 times the quantity 1 minus 15x. Once again, we'll do some removing of parentheses. First inside, minus 3 minus 4x minus 2x equals 9 plus 2 minus 30x. Now we'll combine some terms. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 minus 4x minus 2x equals 11 minus 30x. We'll remove these brackets. Negative 7 minus 28x minus 2x equals 11 minus 30x. Combine the x terms negative 7 minus 30x equals 11 minus 30x. Perhaps you can see right now that this is going to be a contradiction. Adding 30 to both sides gives us the obviously false statement that negative 7 is equal to 11. So this is a contradiction, and there is no solution to this particular problem. Let's confirm this contradiction with our graphing calculator. Going to the graphing calculator and pushing the y1, you can see that we have the y1 equation typed in already. We have the y2 equation typed in already. And we've adjusted our window so that we'll be able to see that a little better. Pushing the graph, we see that we get two appears to be two straight lines and that they appear to be parallel. That would confirm our con solution that we have a contradiction. Since the graphs do not appear to intersect, there is no solution to this problem. Let's look over the major points of this section so that when you're doing your own work at home, you can uh, look over this material and know what you're supposed to be uh, mastering. The major points of this section are solving a linear equation by using the distributive property or addition or multiplication property, to clear a fraction or decimal in an equation by multiplying by the least common denominator, and that we can do graphical support for our solutions in two different ways. The intersection of graphs method, the x-intercept method. Some graphing calculators have a solver function that will allow you to solve the analytic solution of equations by themselves. You should practice these skills until you're proficient at each one. The properties of linear inequalities look a lot like the properties for equations. If, an, if A is less than B, we can add the same quantity to both sides of the inequality and it remains true. That's the addition or subtraction property. The multiplication property says if C is larger than 0 and A is less than B, then their products stay in the same order. The different thing about inequalities is that if you multiply both sides by a negative number, C less than 0, then the inequality sign will reverse. Let's solve an inequality and see how that process works.